first time since I was about 19 that I've been in an eclipse. It used to be that hero car, it used to be Need for Speed, it used to be Brian O'Connor's car, and you never see them. You see Subarus, you see Evos, but you don't see eclipses. Once upon a time, Mitsubishi was the king of the sports compact multiverse. The Japanese brand built its reputation as a rally racing champion, galvanizing the street cred of the Lancer Evo and the tuner car scene. And through Diamond Star Motors, its American partnership with Chrysler, it turned out the true icon in the Eclipse GSX. Years ago, Mitsubishi was the obvious choice as the hero car in the Fast and the Furious and a fan favorite in the video game Need for Speed Underground. But today, Mitsubishi is just another consumer automotive brand whose crossover SUVs have as much street cred as a cardigan sweater with only a few enthusiasts keeping the Three Diamond logo relevant in the tuner community. Not only does this episode start with this car, but a lot of people don't realize that my car adventures started with this car. My very first time hearing anti-lag. It was the first time I'd ever been in the passenger seat while there was an all-wheel drive launch. And you know what? It was the first time I felt the car brake right after an all-wheel drive launch. <laughs> This is quite frankly, one of the cleanest versions of an Eclipse I've ever seen. And so you know that the owner cares about the car. Now, of course, I have got a lot of questions to ask him. I love digging deep into cars, but what I do know about DSMs or Diamond Star Motors is that they're notoriously unreliable. And the type of person that would take this on as their car project has to be someone very special. How's it going, man? Hey, man. Miguel, nice, nice to meet you. Here. here she is. That's your baby. 99 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX. Where did you start from and how did you get here? The way I found out about these eclipses was basically Need for Speed Underground, Need for Speed Underground 2. Of course, Fast and the Furious came out. My dad used to have a Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX back when I was in elementary school. He promised to give it to me as my first car. He ended up selling it off for a four-door Corolla, which I was devastated by. Wow. Uh, so it was basically my goal for this to be my first car. I couldn't afford a GSX, so I got the non-turbo front-wheel drive naturally aspirated model, which is what this is. Over the last 10 years that I built it, it's all-wheel drive swapped, uh, 4G63 from an Evo, making 440 wheel, and it's a great car. Winter runs. That, that is awesome. <laughs> and, and you've kept it in good shape, because all the ones I know of are all trash. Yeah, it's, it's as clean as I can get it. It's still original paint, it has dents and scratches. No it's way. not perfect, but I try my best with it. You did what first? The all-wheel drive, the engine swap? I used to get a lot of hate from the turbo model guys, the GST and GSX guys, for having a non-turbo model. And something inside of me burned. I was like, you know what, I gotta prove everybody wrong. And I'm gonna go ahead and Evo swap this thing because it was like, a, it was an urban urban legend, basically. It, have, it hasn't really been done. And um, to this really? day, it's, yeah, it's not really, it, there's only a couple in the world worldwide that have this swap, especially all wheel drive swap. I think there's, this is the, the second one, basically. So me and my friends basically hung out every weekend in the garage and built this thing from the ground up and just figured it out as we went. So it was, it was a complete guinea pig. I documented everything online on social media and this is kind of where it's at right now. So I still have long ways to go, but I'm happy to where it's at for the you know 10 year span. Oh, that is clean. This car is known as a Frankenstein. So basically it's an Evo 8 4G63, it's an Evo 9 Turbo, Evo 4 transmission, Evo 5 transfer case, uh, GSX rear, so we're talking gas tank, rear subframe, uh, rear diff from an automatic GSX, and then we had a custom dry shaft made to fit. And then we also have Evo 5 axles that would, the shafts are made a little bit longer just to be able to fit the, yeah. the DSM. I have to ask, what would break first on this car? I would want to say transfer case. Yep. I have a feeling it's starting to go out because I do hear a slight whine. So yeah. it's still stock internals, but the Evo 4 G63 is known to handle a lot of power easily. Really? Yeah. I prefer this over the K, yeah. the K series, yeah. but I mean, that's just me. I'm very biased. I'm a, I'm a huge Mitsubishi guy, so this is, this is my platform. Yeah, it's being unique. You can do what works or you can be unique. And yeah. I think that I would choose the second. Yeah. And what's, the, what's like the power curve? Is like, it, it keeps going? It's, or? It, it hits boost quick and it's, it's very linear, I feel like. Ooh. I am super curious what that's like. Can I drive it? It's a rare thing that I let people drive, but I guess for the occasion, you're, you're, you're good to go. Just please take care of it, it's my baby. I will definitely do that. <laughs> oh, that is
is a classic blow off valve sound if I've ever heard one. <laughs> You know, I never got into four cylinders, inline four cylinders, and now I'm realizing how much I've been missing out on other engine platforms. It really comes as an honor with this type of show to be able to drive other people's cars. Now, my cars would never have been this reliable to let somebody else just take the keys and go, and I know the emotion that he's feeling sitting over there on the side is, you know, what's this other guy gonna do? But, Rest assured, Miguel, I'm never gonna beat on somebody else's car. I'm just gonna appreciate what they've done to it to make it possible. I feel nervous, sure, but it's just like, I, I get to admire it from a third person perspective. I know it's not good to have a sentimental attachment to materialistic things, but that car and I have such a great bond that I just, it's hard to explain. I'm, I'm sure car guys can relate because it's like, there's that one car that just does it for you, and that's the one that does it for me, so. He wasn't lying. It, it, the power really does come on very linear. The manual steering on this car is something you really don't want to take lightly. It requires a lot of work and power steering ends up going back onto my cars, but that's just the evolution of a car guy. Now, Miguel's engine swap is momentous. You just don't see a lot of Evo swapped eclipses around. So if you're doing a show about Mitsubishi tuning, that global hero car has to represent in some way. And in America, Evos are pretty common but not this one. Even in Japan, an Evo wagon is a pretty rare sight. Only about 2,500 of the JDM model left the factory, and this one is nowhere near factory stock. Jeff, the owner of this wagon, calls it a grocery go-getter. That may be a joke, but it's also an understatement. It's been highly upgraded with a turbocharged 2.2 liter and sequential transmission. It adds up to 917 horsepower, that's like three stock Evo wagons put together. You're the first person to ever drive my car. Well, I appreciate that. I can tell you already, I love this car. We're on a racetrack, but you already are telling me that this is for like street bulls? Yeah, so, so I built it for street racing, and it's a fully built 2.2 two uh, stroker engine with a grand sequential. We built it A through D to handle uh, drag racing. So like everything's 900 plus rated. This car, I will tell you already, for me, is more sorted for the track than most of my cars. You have drag radials on it, and I still feel like this car is really well built. I think this thing's nuts. You said you built it for one thing, but I think it was meant to do a lot of things really well. Not only that, but a wagon here, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I dynoed it and made a 917 horsepower with a 684 foot pounds torque at 42 pounds boost. So what does this thing redline to? Uh, I think it redlines to 8,400. Oh my God. With daylight running out and with Jeff at the wheel, we head down to the front straight to see how this thing pulls. I think I'm ready for it, and I still wasn't ready for it. That's so sick. And then we do it again, just for the memories. <laughs> That's incredible. I feel like Mitsubishi, the, the motorsport division, is such it's it's a great thing, but I feel like it kind of faded out, especially compared to the like, you know all these new cars that are coming out. The Supra we have. Well, it was the new Z that came out. What does Mitsubishi have? We have a crossover for an Eclipse. That car was built based off the underdog theme. Almost out of pettiness, I'm just like, you know what, I wanna build something so awesome that it's gonna, it's gonna be out there one day and I'm gonna build something so cool that it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's weird.